Okay, now let's look at a second example that's slightly more complex. It's more complex for two reasons. First, uh, there are multiple wrappers, uh, so we'll have to go up several levels to eliminate the residual styling. And second, this theme does not place the menu directly inside the header.php. It places the menu call, along with a bunch of other code, inside a PHP function. So that means editing the code is just as simple, but overriding it in a child theme becomes more complex than just you know copying and pasting a template. So let's run through that now. I'm going to try to go through it a little bit more quickly. Um, I was going slowly for that first round, obviously. All right, so let's go and switch our theme to a theme called Travelify. This is also a very popular theme. Um, I'm going to activate it. Let's look at our front end. Okay. And now remember these, so these two themes both happen to use the um, theme location slug primary, which is very common. It's not an absolute standard, but it's very common. Um, so when I switched themes, the menu was still applied to the proper theme location without any issue. If you switch themes and you're not seeing Ubermenu, remember that you need to go back into the Ubermenu settings and, and activate Ubermenu on the appropriate theme location for that theme. Okay. With this theme, it's immediately obvious that there's an issue with residual styling. Uh, this button is showing, which it shouldn't be. It should only be showing on, uh, on the mobile menu. Uh, you can see that these are uh, obviously messed up. The arrows are overlapping, and we don't have a, a mega sub menu at all. It's, it's a complete mess. All right, so let's jump right into it. Let's re-enable the direct injection testing so we have a menu to compare to. All right, now we have our control menu to compare to. You can see this is what we're supposed to look like. This is what it looks like now. Not so good. All right, we're going to run the diagnostics tool. So go to Uber menu, diagnostics, uh, click on tools, run the residual styling tool. Okay, overview of what residual styling is, activate direct injection, we already did that. Time to unwrap the menu. Okay, so again, we need to tell it which menu uh, we want to work with. It might be a little confusing because it says click on the green border. There's two green borders because this outside green is actually part of the themes container but uh, it's this one just surrounding the menu here. So I'm going to click on that. Now it knows we're working with this menu. And now I just have to click on remove container until the bad styles are removed. Now, just as a side note, if you click remove container and you never remove the styles, that just means something else is going on. So this tool isn't going to help you, but it at least eliminates uh, the possibility that you have a residual styling from a wrapper. Okay. So we're going to click remove container and uh, nothing really got any better. It still looks terrible. Uh, so this is the wrapper we removed. Didn't do anything. Let's remove another one. Ah, there we go. So now it removed this nav with ID main. And if we take a look, wow, that looks great as opposed to what it looked like before. Okay, so we've determined that the source of the issue is this container, and we want to move every menu outside of that. Now that we know that's the source, we're going to click on the green button, click once residual styling is removed. All right, here's another overview of, you can see that we removed two containers this time, so we have main nav and this inner container. We're going to replace both. Do keep in mind that things like this container, often that's centering something, so uh, once you complete this process, you may have the menu uh, is much wider than it was originally. If that happens, you can just go into this into the Uber menu control panel settings and go to position and layout. You can give your menu its appropriate width and set the uh, menu bar alignment to center, and that will recenter the menu for you. Okay, um, so. This is what you're going to be looking for in the theme. This is approximately what you're going to be replacing it with. 
to eliminate the residual styling. So now let's search the theme files for the menu. Okay. So you can see it searched for that ID of main nav, and it also searched for WP nav menu, and we've got a variety of results. Okay, so first you can see in this customizer.php file, it found main nav a bunch of times, um, but this is all CSS. Apparently the theme is generating custom CSS inside the PHP files. Um, so, you know, this is not what we're looking for. This is CSS. We're not messing with the CSS. We're looking for PHP. There's, here's the second file it found a result in, in this header extensions.php, which is one, two uh, directories deep within the theme structure. So here you can see it's echoing this nav element. And that's the nav element that we're looking for, if you uh, look at that reminder up there. But obviously, uh, we're in the middle of some type of function here. We're echoing. We're, it's not just straight up HTML inside of a PHP template. And you can see that there's also two places where it occurs, line 124 and line 131. So now we know that the code that we're looking for is in Travelify library structure header extensions.php and we'll start looking at line 124. Okay, so let's switch over to our code editor and we're going to go to Travelify, library, structure, header extensions.php and you said it was line 124. Okay, so here's line 124 and also, here's our second result, which was on line 131, printing the same thing right here. All right, so this is a bit redundant, but um, obviously you need to know which one of these you're going to be replacing. Now, you could just replace both, and that would work just fine. But if you don't want to do the extra work, you can just evaluate. This is saying um, if basically if a menu is assigned to the primary theme location print the menu with the theme location otherwise print the menu uh, this is saying just print a default menu so this is really this shouldn't be like this this should uh, the arguments should be within this condition but there's no need to have these two separate echoes uh, but that's beside the point the one you're dealing with is this one Okay, so this is the code that we want to replace with Ubermenu. But this is a bit more complex than when we were just working in a basic PHP template. We're not actually in a template file anymore. We're just in a PHP file that um, this is actually part of a function. Some themes uh, do things this way. The reason they're doing it this way is because they're using a hook system, which does allow for a lot of flexibility. Um, but this should probably, well, I would have made this a little more granular uh, so that you don't have to replace this entire function when you want to change uh, one item in it. So if you were making the changes in the parent theme, which you shouldn't, um, you would just edit this code here and be done with it. You'd replace this with Ubermenu. In order to override this function in a child theme, what we'd need to do is unhook this action create our own copy of this function in the child theme and then attach that function to this action hook. So let's go ahead and do that just so I can show you what I mean. This function we're basically going to need to copy and paste and we're also going to need this. So I just copied that whole thing and you would normally do this in a child theme inside the child themes functions.php because you, you can only override templates in a child theme, and this is not a template, this is just a regular PHP file. So, to simulate that, I'm going to open the themes functions.php file. So again, you should be doing this in a child theme, I'm just doing this for demonstration here. I'm gonna paste this. Now if I just save this file and reload the site, we're gonna get an error because I haven't changed the function name, so you can't define the same function twice. So let's call this Travelify header details uber menu. We're also going to uh, remove the original action. 
We may need to remove to move this into another callback depending on the sequencing of the action hooks, but let's try this first. Um, so we're going to remove the original hook, which is the, the function in this other file, and we're going to replace it with ours. All right, and then let's just do a really simple test to see if this worked. So I'm just going to echo this text. If it shows up, I know that I have properly uh, overridden that function. Okay, so there's my text new menu. Uh, uh, so what I can see here is that I have added my function improperly, but I have not removed um, the original menu properly. So now I have two headers and that's not good. Uh, so what I need to do is run this action uh, later. Uh, right now I've run it. I've run the remove action command before that action is actually defined. So it's not working. So I'm going to run it a bit later by saying add action. Okay, uh, so now what I'm doing is uh, I've written a function that removes the action and I'm running that function after I know the header has already, the uh, action has already been defined. So if I refresh now, there we go. Now I only have one menu and it's the one that I'm using to replace it. Okay, so now that I have effectively created a copy of this original uh, this original function that outputs the menu, and again, you should be doing this in a child theme, I am going to go ahead and edit the actual code. So I don't need that anymore. Normally, oops. Normally, you would be working with code like this, right? This is the template, the skeleton that I would copy and paste and uh, move your code in here. You can still use this, but if you just use it raw like this, it's going to create a PHP error because you can't have PHP tags inside other PHP tags. So basically we're already in a PHP section here. We don't need to open a new one. So I need to remove that. And at the end, we uh, don't want to close the PHP section because it's going into uh, additional uh, PHP functionality. So we're going to remove the end tag too. Okay, now there's obviously other ways to write this. You don't need to open and close it all here. Um, you could just echo the menu rather than uh, moving in and out of the PHP tags. If you know how to do that, obviously go ahead and do that. I'm just trying to make this as simple as possible for people who aren't familiar uh, with writing PHP. Okay, so the theme code goes here. So I'm going to move this code into the else statement But we can't leave it like this because, um, again, uh, this is expecting to be inside PHP. So uh, the simplest way to resolve this is to delete that. So uh, we originally we were closing out the PHP for this else statement, so we're expecting HTML. We're not going to do that anymore. We're going to continue with PHP. And at the end, we're going to remove that PHP tag as well. So now this code which is the same as it was here, uh, or sorry, it was the same originally from the theme. It now works within our if else condition. We've just had to modify this a bit to work inside of a PHP statement rather than inside of an HTML uh, template. Now that we've done this, we still need to generate the Uber menu manual integration code. So let's go back to the Uber menu settings and we will go to the integration, manual integration. We'll select our theme location, primary menu, and we're going to copy that, come back here, and we can paste it right there. 
You could also obviously remove uh, these extra tags, but uh, there's a lot of different ways to write it, of course. And uh, then we save our functions.php file. Now we've got our conditional logic. If Uber menu exists, show Uber menu. Otherwise, show the theme menu. All right. Now let's go back to our home page and we'll refresh. And we'll see now the menu is here without any residual styling from the theme. Um, and of course, finally, we will also disable the direct injection testing because we don't need that anymore. All right, and that's all there is. Now, this is one of the more complex scenarios because uh, the theme is using hooks. Most people that are using themes that are using, hook, that are using hooks already know how to deal with this stuff, but um, you know, I tried to walk through it at a fairly slow pace so that you could get that if, you, uh, if you're not as familiar. If you don't understand PHP, then this part was probably a bit confusing, having to remove the PHP tags and stuff like that. Um, for the most part, dealing with this stuff is far simpler, like we had in the first example, where you don't actually have to touch the PHP, you just have to copy and paste segments of code into the right spot. If, you have, if you're running into trouble, you don't understand the PHP, and you've got a, a scenario like this where it's more complex, you have to deal with a theme that, um, you know, where the templating isn't as straightforward, you can just submit a ticket and we'll, we'll help you get this sorted out. Or you can ask the theme developer, you say, you know, what are the hooks I need to use to remove the themes menu and add in my own menu, and they should be able to tell you that, and then you could come to us if you need help with what the, you know, the actual, uh, Uber menu code is to put into that. So, um, okay. Hopefully, this gives you a good overview of how that uh, new residual styling detection tool works. Uh, if you're an advanced developer, you probably don't need this at all, but it might still save you a little bit of time if you want to just be able to click a button rather than having to uh, do the developer tools and then search through your theme files separately. Um, being able to find the load the location really easily is, is certainly useful, especially if you uh, don't want to pull your files down off a server to do a global search. All right, so that's the long and the short of it. Uh, I hope you find this new tool useful when you need to uh, locate the source of residual styling in your themes.